Well, my name is Terry Lines, and I teach at Wyland Park. I'm a reading recovery teacher, and I'm also a literacy collaborative coach. And so we're going to talk about reading processes, and it's a lot. But I made the title Conversations to Comprehension because the idea is that you're going to be able to read a book with your child, and you're going to have conversations with your child to help them with their comprehension. So I made this uh, Prezi into a journey because that's exactly what reading is. It is a journey of how we learn how to read and the journey that we take because we keep developing more and more skills and strategies. Um, on your, in your packet, there is a page that says, what is reading processes? And in this packet, basically strategies are um, in your head, you, they're really not observable. It's what we do when we are reading. And there's 12 different strategies. And we're, I'm gonna tell you what they are, but we're only gonna concentrate on two. But when they're comprehending, you want children to be able to self-monitor the comprehension. You want them to be able to ask and answer questions before they read, during they read, and after they're reading. Um, and it just becomes a habit for them. A lot of students just want to grab something and go and just read, and they don't know what they're reading, and they're not reading for meaning. So the idea is you stop and you start to ask questions. They start to self-correct their errors. If they come to a word they don't know, then they stop and they try to figure it out instead of mumbling through it, instead of skipping over it, or pretending that they read the word. And then to also be assessing their own understanding. Do, are, do, are they really understanding what they're reading? So I'm gonna briefly, it's not in your packet, but I'm gonna briefly just tell you what some of the strategies are and then we'll concentrate on R2. And I lost my page there. But the first one is to predict. And that's where they're going to be thinking about what they think will happen next in the story. You don't have it in your packet. To infer, that means that they have to go beyond the literal knowledge. Like if the book said, the moon was big and the stars were out, you're going to infer what time of the day is it? Night. Night. So that's an inference. It doesn't say it in there, but they have to think beyond the text. So they have to develop inferencing skills. Um, they have to learn how to, to decode so that they know that they're reading and to break words into chunks. Um, they have to monitor and correct the reading. If they come to a word they don't know and they put a word in there, they're going to be able to start to ask themselves, does that word sound right, does that word look right, and does that word make sense in the story? This is what we're going to focus on is questioning. You want them to start to wonder, I wonder why the character is doing that, or why is this happening in the story? To evaluate. Evaluate, you have to read a lot to know whether it's a good book or a bad book. You have to know whether you're going to agree or disagree. So this takes on knowledge beyond the text. Another processing is to summarize. Summarizing is where they can tell you what the main idea is and the parts. And an easy thing that I do to help summarize are these simple thoughts. Somebody wanted, but so. So somebody's the character. What did the character want? But what happened? So then what happened? So if you can get your child to follow this simple format when they're reading, then that's an easy way for them to remember. Like Goldilocks wanted to get into the house, but she had this, so this is what happened. So that's a, just four little words. It's easy to help them summarize, and they get most of the parts in there they need. Making connections. This is where when they start reading, they start to think, oh, this reminds me of when I did this. Or they're going to think about, this reminds me of what's happening in the world, or this makes me think of another book. And so we call that text to text, text to self, and text to world. But they're making connections in some way to the book. Visualizing. This is where you kind of get like a little movie in your mind where you start to get images. Like if you're reading about the character, you start to get a vision what that character looks like. Or you start to think, oh, I, um, I think I know what the setting looks like by, by the word. So you want like this little movie camera visualizing. 
Synthesizing is where they're being able to put information together to create an understanding. Fluency, this is really important because they're gonna be taking a three hour test. And in the three hour test, if they're a word to word reader, they're never gonna make it through. And the best way to model fluency is by you guys sharing a book together. You read, a, the parent reads a page, the child reads a page. They need to constantly hear what good reading sounds like. Um, and eventually they can read more than that. Um, fluency also means that they can sound like the character. Fluency also means that they can uh, read punctuation and have intonation in their voice. So um, that's a strategy. Being able to analyze is being able to understand the elements of a text. So that's a lot of strategies. Look at all the things that we do when we read. We don't even know we're doing it, but we are, and we're trying to teach the kids. Since that's too much, we're just gonna focus on like asking the answering questions. And this quote by Harvey and Gouda says, a reader with no questions might just as well abandon the book. Because if you don't think about what you're reading, why are you really reading? So we're going to look at uh, a nonfiction, and you do have this in your packet, and there's a couple places. You have a comprehension strategy page, and we did a lot of these. The only thing extra on there is in, in a fiction book are some of the characters analysis, what is the character like, maybe why the author's writing it, and then the, the main idea, and also for the nonfiction. The next page you have in here as a reference is we want students to start to ask questions before they read, during their reading, and after their reading. And with this, these are just kind of things that you, it can guide you into kind of questions that you might want to ask. So I thought what I would do is I would have maybe a brave volunteer come up and they might want to be with me and we can talk about a story. Would someone like to come up here and join me? I'm, it's all right, if, I will help you with anything. Oh, I see I have one back here, come on up. It's fun, we'll have fun, yay. Don't, there's a cord right there, honey, so you gotta come around here. Yay! And you look all pretty and everything. All right, well, I wanted to share this story with you because this story, I've always loved it. And when I look at this, the title says, The Stories Julian Tells. Now that makes me wonder about something, stories. I think to myself, are these stories that he can tell or do you think he makes up stories? What do you think? Tell. You think he's going to tell stories or make it? All right. Well, we're going to read and find out if he can or not. Now, when you look at this cover, what do you think about when you look at this? I, you're shy, aren't you? I think about who are these two and who, which one is Julian, right? And what are they eating? Do we know what they're eating? No. But, and then why is there an ocean behind them? Do you, see, when you look at the pictures, you can say, oh my gosh. Now let's look at this and see if we think that this book's gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna look at some of the pictures in here. And what I like about it is that it, they are black and white. And what do you think they're doing in this page? Like making they're, Yeah, they're making the pudding, you're right. And then over here we have the ocean, and on this there's some kind of a boat or something that's going on there. Huh. All right. Well, I'm going to look at this. The title of this chapter we're going to read first is called The Pudding Like a Night on the Sea. Now, do you know what a night on the sea would be like? Never being on a sea, it'd be hard to know, but generally... I think that on the sea at night, it's very quiet, very quiet, very smooth. So it says the pudding like a night on the sea. Does that make you think of a question in your mind? Make you wonder about anything? I wonder how a pudding would be like a night on the sea. How it may be because it's smooth, huh? All right. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'll read a little bit and then you can read a little bit, all right? 
I'm going to make something special for your mother, my father said. My mother was out shopping. My father was in the kitchen looking at the pots and the pans and the jars of this and that. What are you going to make? I said. Do you like to read? And I'll help you. A pudding, he said. Read a little bit louder so they can hear you. A pudding, he said. My father is a big man with wild black hair. When he laughed, the sun laughed in the window panes. Panes, mm hmm. When, the, when he thinks, you can almost see his thought, thoughts sitting on all the tables and chairs when he is angry. Me and my little brother, Huey, Huey, give it to the bottom of our shoes. All right, so who did they just describe in our story? Who did they just tell us about? The father, yeah. And what, what did they tell you about the dad? How, do you remember? All right, what did you remember about it? All right, listen to this, and I, I love this, and I want you to see what it thinks about. When he laughs, the sun laughs in the window panes. What in the world does that mean, you think? The sun laughs in the window panes. What's that make you think of? When the sun comes through the windows like it is over there and sometimes it moves, does it, what do you think of? I'm putting you on the spot. All right, so I'm going to help you out here. Uh, when I think about that, I think when the sun laughs in the window panes, it means that it's kind of like dancing. If you've ever seen it kind of dance. So when the dad laughs, everybody laughs. And he says, when he's angry, me and my little brother Huey, we shiver to the bottom of our shoes. What do you think that means? Oh, you're right. So that's how we're inferring because it's not written in there that, he's, that he's, they're scared, but that you need to know that about the dad. All right. So I would have her read a little bit more. And then after we read, I would say, so who's the character and what are they doing? All right, so it's a lot of doing that. Thank you very much for coming up here. You did a nice job. All right, so then there's nonfiction. And on your chart, you, there's different kinds of questions you're going to ask for nonfiction books. But it's the same thing. You want to start to look at a title and ask some questions. And so in this book, like, what's the difference? Birds. So I would probably think, what are they going to be comparing if they're asking what's the difference? And what do I really want to know about birds? I want to know why this guy looks like he's got that funny little haircut. I mean, he's just very cute. Isn't he a cute bird? Now, what's, we take a lot for granted when we read because we know things and we forget that a lot of times kids are introduced to them, but they may not be secure in their thoughts. Like a... Nonfiction book is different than regular books because you don't have to read it cover to cover, right? You can read bits and pieces of it, and you can read it in any order you want to read it in. But it has a table of contents. And the reason it has a table of contents is because you can pick what interests you. And then you just follow along and you go to the page. They also uh, need to know that there's also, in the back of the book, there's references to help you. Like, there's going to be all kinds of charts, and this says a scale of birds. If they don't know what a scale is, this is not going to be able to help them. So you need to help your child learn how to read some of the scales. This is comparing the size of all the different animals. When they're taking a test, there's going to be some bold printed words in the text, and that's where they want to start to ask questions again. If it has here aviary, they're going to have to think to themselves, what's an aviary? What do they want me to know about it? It's in bold print. It must be important. There will be a word box on the test, so they know if it's bold, they can go to the word box and find the meaning for the text. And they can go there to, if they're reading along and they want to know what it is. Also, there's an index. So if you want to learn about a certain kind of a bird or you want to learn something about it, you can go here, like at Habitats, and go to page six. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to ask a few questions. Does, do I have another brave volunteer come up? 
did you want to come up? Your mom says, yes, you do. I'll be kind. Come on up here. All right. What do you, what do you, what do you know about birds? That they, um, uh, some of them, they eat food and uh, they fly. Yeah. Is there anything you want to learn about birds? Uh, sharks would probably have been a better book for you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I do have a book on sharks back there, but let's just say you're really interested in birds. What would you like to know about birds? Like where they live, their habitats, what they eat, how they eat, feathers. What would you like to learn? How they eat. How they eat. All right. Let's go to the table of contents. And it says, catching a meal, page eight. All right. Oh, here's an interesting chart. And this is the chart that shows a flow chart, and those are interesting on how to learn how to do that. All right, let's go to page eight, and it says catching a meal. So when you think of catching a meal, how do you think a bird would catch a meal? Uh, like they fly down really fast and then uh, get it. So you're predicting that they're gonna swoop down and catch the meal, so that's good. So we're questioning, we're thinking about it. Let's, we're gonna read and find out. Now, do you know what this little thing is for right here? Uh, no. No. All right. So a lot of features, they don't know what it is, which is fine because we're all here to learn. And what it is, it's a caption. And that means that this arrow is pointing straight up to the picture. So you can tell that it's a little bit different because the font is a different size. The font's a little different. And it's pointing up, telling you that this about it. And it says, this kingfisher dives into the river to catch small fish. There's also going to be, and we're going to read that in just a second. There's also going to be some boxes. And you know why they would have a box in the middle of a page? I want to give you more information. You're exactly right. And that's good to know. Now, this author was trying to be very cute, and he put three little birds. And so what that means is there's three different pieces of information for you. All right, let's go back to catching a meal. So if we're looking at this, I can tell by looking at the picture, what do they have to use in order to catch their bill? You think they swoop down, but there's something else. Looks like they need to use their, yeah, beak. yeah, they do. All right, I'm going to read a little bit, and then if you want, would you like to read a little bit? All right. The shape of a bird's bill, or beak, is a cue to the type of food it eats. Eagles have sharp beaks for tearing food into bite-sized pieces. Oh, that's interesting. So their beak is kind of like a tool. All right. Pellets and fin... fin very good. You know what you're doing? You are working through the word. And this is exactly what we want to do. There's a page in your handout about how to help children read. And there's three things you need to do. Number one, wait. Don't tell them what the word is right away. All right. So thank you very much for helping us. I did bring some books here I want you to maybe you might want to look at for your kids that are interesting to third graders. Bad Kitty, the boys love. It's a very funny, humorous book. Boys also love the Vampire School series, and this is on uh, casket ball capers, so it's all about it. There's Captain Awesome. There's a whole series of these books, and they're superhero. There are graphic novels like Squish, Baby Mouse. The thing about these, the girls like Baby Mouse, the boys like Squish. What you have to know is if it's black and white, it's what she's doing. If it's pink, it's what she's thinking. So there's kind of two storylines going on in these. Uh, boys also like vampire stories. Girls like Heidi, Bink and Golly. Bone is a fun graphic uh, novel that the boys like, and you can help think through that. Also, boys like reading Mighty Robots. These are... Um, from Monkeys from Mars and all the different planets. They're fun to read, power action ones. This is a story where you can read a part, your child reads a part, and you tell it. There's also some beautiful nonfiction in the back. So if you want, you can look at some of these beautiful books. They need to stay here because they're mine in the libraries. But you're welcome to look at some of these books, and thank you very much.